Hey guys, Carl here, Cultivate with Carl, and man, is it a better week. I feel a lot better. Uh, the yard has been mowed. Uh, actually, it looks like it's getting ready for another mowing. Uh, the weather has been much different uh, from the heat that we were suffering before. So now what we're getting is a mixture of heat and rain. So it has rained pretty much every day for the last couple weeks. There's been a couple days where we missed out. But like this morning, seven o'clock in the morning, woke up to thunderstorms and a torrential downpour. Everything out here is wet. And uh, that's good though. So, I mean, the plants that I have in the garden are looking great. We're getting a lot of produce off of them, uh, which is great because of the fact that, uh, you know, with the heat stifling everything, it just took us out of the game, you know, for over a month. So, uh, now we're transitioning and we're starting to prepare for our fall gardens and you'll see there's going to be video later in this video about us prepping this bed right here getting it up to speed we actually uh, used some hugel culture some logs you know we made a, a hugel culture bed you're going to kind of see a very short version of how we did that i mean there's enough hugel culture videos on youtube i don't want to bore you so just kind of how i put the bed together my thought process is now, my goal today is to get one of the unassembled beds assembled. And then my goal for tomorrow is to get the other bed assembled and get them placed and start sourcing material to get those beds put together. And so once those beds are done, uh, we are going to start planting stuff. Now, fall crops... Uh, I'm going to try a little bit of everything, but I'm not going to really overdo it like I did the spring crops. So we're not going to overcrowd the gardens. Uh, we're going to try some different vegetation, uh, some different plants, and uh, that's that. So before we move on to our tour of the garden and before we move on to the how I built this bed, let's talk about current uh, world situation stuff. So one of the reasons why I garden is for the hobby uh, aspect of it. It's fun coming outside and doing stuff in the yard. It's fun coming outside and checking out your plants and making produce that I get to consume or that I get to give away to friends who are, you know, they're, very, they're happy. Uh, the people that I've given stuff to have, uh, have liked it a lot. That's great. And it's all about sharing and community stuff. But uh, in, I'm not a conspiracy buff, you know, or a conspiracy theory. I, I, I pay attention to what's going on in the world. And if I speak to that, I'm not being some kind of cuckoo. Uh, just so that you know. One of the things that you should be paying attention to is the verbiage of food shortages on the horizon. Now, uh, that's important if it plays out the way that the doomsday prepper guys are saying, uh, it's gonna be pretty significant for a lot of people in the world, maybe not so much us. Um, but let's say it is bad for us, then how are you gonna provide produce to yourself and your family? I started this last year with that bed right there and uh, some seeds and no know-how whatsoever. And I've learned everything that I've learned over the last couple years by watching a lot of YouTube, but by getting out here and doing it. You are not going to build a sustainable uh, vegetable garden that's going to help sustain you and your family overnight in one season without experience. It's just not going to happen. I've made more mistakes than I could count. It has cost me multiple crops. And you've been here for a lot of that. So what I would tell you is this. I don't know if it's true or not what's happening in the world. And I don't know that if it's uh, gonna be as bad as they say. Um, over in Europe right now, uh, to reduce the carbon footprint, they're telling farmers that they can't farm uh, to the extent that they used to. And so therefore they're already shortening up food supplies in Europe uh, in the name of being carbon neutral. I would rather be able to feed myself and my family um, in my backyard than depend on other people to uh, provide for me and mine. 
all right? Doing this is a fun hobby. Start out right now as a fun hobby. You do it for a couple seasons, two or three seasons, you get the basic setup, you get the basic understanding of how to do it, then bam, you don't need it. Then you move on to racquetball or surfing or golfing or something else that doesn't matter. But if all of a sudden you find that it would be nice to supplement your income and uh, have some extra fruits and vegetables on the table that taste better than anything you could buy in the store, well then there you go. But uh, you know that this has gotten a little bit longer winded than I intended it to. My word to you, uh, my advice to you is to be prepared. And that means you know, I've got three bins of compost over there because next year fertilizer is supposed to be hard to get. I hope to double that before the winter's out. You know, so I'll have those three bins. I'll amend the beds. I'll start three more bins and then I'll be ready to go. I depend on my neighbors for that. You know, they provide me uh, raw materials, uh, leaves, sticks, logs, table scraps. Um, and that helps me out. And in return, I can give them some tomatoes and stuff. It's a good system. All right, so enough preachiness, but that's, I think that's important to mention. I think that's important to talk about. Um, let's go ahead and take a tour of the garden. Uh, things are looking good. I'm probably gonna have to get out here and do some, um, probably get out here and do some pinning up of stuff and supporting the, the bell peppers or the pepper plants are getting a little leany and uh, we'll see, but let's go take a look at the squash plants. Okay, the squash bed. So here you go. You can see that the squash plants are doing good. Um, we've got lots of flowers. I haven't come out first thing in the morning yet to see if the pollinators are visiting. Uh, we've got some spots on some of the leaves. Maybe indicative of a little powdery mildew. Uh, we'll have to check. Have not seen any vine bore damage, knock on wood, yet. So hopefully soon we'll start producing again. A lot of squash and zucchini. And look at this. Squirrel defense force. On guard always. Ever vigilant. Well, except for Gunner. Because Gunner's over there sniffing in the roses or something. I don't know what he's doing. So, there you go. <laughs> Way to go, Rube. Good job. Alright, let's look at the pepper beds. Alright, pepper beds. I already harvested off the uh, banana peppers. But as you can see, we're getting more banana peppers. Uh, we've got more flowers. You got the Graham Marconi back there. Uh, he's flying solo, but there's a couple more that are coming in right here. So that's cool. I think you grill those. Uh, my buddy Keith said that he knew what to do with them. Uh, we've got some more, uh, I believe these are going to be jalapenos. Yeah, they should be jalapenos. And on this plant right here, we've got jalapenos that are almost ready. Um, our marigolds are getting out of control. That's all right. These are those little snackable peppers. Uh, they stay small. And uh, I'm going to pop them off here in a little bit. Uh, I've been putting them in like uh, salads and stuff. And they've been doing pretty good. So uh, nothing here. It's the shishitos. They're doing pretty good. Here's one of the... Uh, I don't know exactly what kind of pepper that was. But that's okay. So we had a couple here didn't make it. And we have one over there failing to thrive. But that's okay. Um, I really, I'm digging those, uh, those orange marigolds. Those are pretty sexy. So there you go. The pepper beds. Okay, over here we've got one of the watermelon plants. And it has vined out all the way over here. And uh, it's gone through. That's why I didn't cut this portion. Um... I put some, I put some uh, alfalfa in there to give it some nitrogen. We're going to give it some plant food here in a little bit. Uh, this is going to be one of the areas where one of the new beds is going to go. Let's go over here and check out the basil and the okra. So believe it or not, this is basil. Mm, it smells wonderful. Uh, it smells great. It's starting to bolt. I'll come out here and clip those off, and then I'm going to dry out some of these. You can see here, I'm starting to get the pods for the okra, which is cool. I don't know what's going on with that. There you go. Pods for the okra. 
and uh, hopefully that means soon we'll be having okra looks like we're gonna have a lot of it too because there's a lot of pods so i don't know what the heck kind of bug that was that was a uh, huge all right so we got at least two different kind of basil see it's starting to bolt but man does this stuff smell good oh this smells wonderful I like rubbing that now check this out over here got my first sunflower that is cool i had to take a picture of that along with some more basil but um, the sunflowers were just little plants we planted all over i think these eggplants are done also and so we'll get these eggplants off of here and uh, let the plants stand back up but you can see the sunflowers are coming too and that's pretty nice uh, here's the rig i had set up to water all the tomato plants and uh, let me tell you that worked out well you know the main feeder line and then each little junction i had two spigots to feed or to water over here in this bed we're going to come in here we're going to rake out the mulch we're going to add in some compost and we're going to add in some uh minerals and you can see like places right here where it's sunk down and that's this bed was made the same way with the hugel culture method so as the top settles you just come back in and add compost and dirt and then you put your mulch back over the top and that's what we're going to do so uh yeah all in all not bad no i mean not a lot going on but hey what's going on is happening really well so uh i'm pretty happy i'm pretty impressed with the dang uh with the dang basil i think what i'm gonna end up doing is trying to dry some of it out um over here we are going to turn this bed and we're going to put potatoes in there that was the original plan uh i'm done with strawberries i don't think that you get in a garden my size that you're going to get enough strawberries to make a big difference so what we're going to do is we're going to rake this out we're going to get in there with the hoe and then we'll uh pull up all those plants We'll turn the soil a little bit. We're going to add a couple bags of soil to it. And then we're going to make sure it's good and loose. We'll come back and add in some seed potatoes for the fall. And I have the seed potatoes in the house already. So that whole plot right there should be one, two, three rows of the same potato. So I'm not going to make the mistake I did in the other bed and mix the potatoes. I'm just going to do the same potato in this one. Then I'm going to do other potatoes and buckets and stuff. All right, there you go. Uh, that's the garden tour uh, for this week. Um, we'll try and walk you around, not get you too motion sick. Uh, the name of the game now is to get the other beds built so we can get the spring garden going. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, let me, I'll pan you around again. Okay, so here is a pan of the garden. So what we're going to do... We're going to level this garden out, fill it up. That garden's ready to go, except it needs mulch. And then we have those two over there. Then we have that big space. So what we're going to do is we're going to make one of the beds. Those two beds are identical. That one and that one. So we're going to make one and we're going to put it in there and see if we have space for another. If we do, I'll order another one to put in there back here we're going to build a bed exactly like this one and we're going to put it right about here and then we're going to put a trellis over the top so oh the dogs are getting froopy what's going on with them look at that squirrel defense force barking at the air conditioner nice job dogs so what i want is one of those uh cow pin uh trellises the big arch trellis and then uh those beds will come uh become you know growing my cucumbers and stuff like that so uh the one the beds that you're looking at here in the middle hang on flipping you around these beds right here i'm probably going to move those i have two more beds just like them and i'm going to put all four of them on the outside here in line with that bed and then this will be the edge of the garden right here so what I may do, I'm inspired by Matt's bed in the back. And I may just put one bed right there along the fence that's about two feet wide and about as tall as his. So about three boards tall, uh, go two feet wide along the fence. And uh, 
and then that will be also used for vining plants to grow up the fence and then you know at the end of the summer I can just burn them off or something like that so uh, there you go all right guys here we go uh, getting the beds prepared it is hot it's probably 102 uh, I'm working in the shade mostly though so let me show you what I've done to this bed yep all right here we go um, Hugo culture look it up uh, basically it means that I'm gonna build this soil from the ground up so underneath this wood there's cardboard then the dirt and uh, we're about to fill in the spaces with some leaves and stuff and kind of top it off at the top of the logs before we start hauling all that dirt over here so okay next step fill in the raised bed uh, I got my fill material in and a lot of that's going to sink down. Uh, I dumped a couple of the uh, grow bags in there, but the goal is to move that big old pile of dirt over here. I think I'm going to go ahead and get the hose, wet it down at this point, and then uh, proceed on with the filling in. So uh, there you go. This is uh, step one logs, step two leaves, step three dirt. All right, there we go. All right, guys, look at that. No dirt over there, all the dirt over here. I am dirty and sweaty and uh, yeah we took a little time off for lunch but we got back out here and knocked it out so uh, there you go um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna water the bed down uh, get some water in there and then I'm gonna tarp it and then we're gonna tarp it till we get the wood chips tacked as a mulch and then uh, that's that I've already seen earthworms in there so uh, we off to a good start Next thing after that, soil test, and then hopefully in the fall we'll be planting here in a little bit. So there you go. That's how you fill a bed, uh, cultivate with Carl style. Okay, guys, there you go. Uh, that's the complete garden tour. And uh, where we're at, you got to uh, look at the beds, how we made the beds. Um, you got to look at the fact that my squirrel defense force is probably unionized and needs to be replaced. And then... Um, you know, we, got, we had a little talk about the, the status of the world and why it's a good time now to get into doing some backyard gardening. So uh, tomorrow, uh, I'm going to work on the uh, lessons learned video. And then um, we're going to push forward from there. So by next week-ish, maybe next week, the week after, we should be getting plants in the ground for a fall. Uh, I've already seen some other gardeners in my zone, in my area. And they already have their starts. They've got tomato plants that are this big. Uh, you know, I'm a little behind the curve. But I have faith in the grow season. Our grow season in 9A on the Mississippi coast goes all the way to first frost is usually mid-December. So I have between now and mid-December to get some more produce. Then as the temperature drops, it will become more conducive for the type plants that I'm going to grow to produce more vegetables, hopefully without the bug pressure from the spring. So there we have it. All right, guys, boom, there you have it. Another uh, episode of uh, Cultivate with Carl. Like I always say, get yourself a hobby, uh, do something fun. You know, uh, don't let the crazy crap going on in the world distract you from having a good time. Uh, hug the ones you love and, uh, you know, appreciate your lackadaisical uh, pets. There you have it. It's Carl, signing off from Cultivate with Carl.